In the good old days, Smith's forged with coal or charcoal. Now, there are a lot of advantages to both fuels, but the efficiency and simplicity of gas makes propane by far and away the most popular fuel for knife makers. There are two aspects to gas forge design. First is the type of burner you'll use. Basically, you have burners powered by blowers and venturi burners which use the pressure of the gas itself to force a fuel-air mixture into the forge. Both have their advocates. The blower type uses a little squirrel cage blower to blow air into a pipe. Gas is forced into the pipe where it mixes with the air. Combustion takes place inside the forge. The advantage of the blower type is that it's quite easy to adjust the heat as well as the fuel-air mixture. The disadvantages are, first, they're comparatively noisy, and second, they require power. So if you feel like forging in your backyard, you have to drag power out there. And third, if your power goes out, you'll continue to pump gas into the forge. This can create an unsafe situation. The Venturi burner, on the other hand, forces a jet of gas down the center of the burner tube. A physical principle known as the Venturi effect causes the gas to sort of drag air along with it, pulling in the oxygen necessary for combustion to take place within the forge. Venturi burners are quieter than blower types and they don't rely on electricity. The disadvantage is they can be a little tricky to adjust. Personally, I like Venturi burners, but both work fine. Okay, now there are actually several different things that forges can be used for. If you only have one forge, you're going to want something that's kind of general use. If you have several, on the other hand, you can tailor them to the specific application you have in mind. The first use, and the main use of a forge, is heating a blade so that you can forge it. You don't need the forge to get super hot for this, and you don't need to heat more than a small section of the blade, so a fairly small forge will work fine. A lot of people like vertical forges, which have a fairly small internal volume for this purpose. If you're making swords, though, a longer forge will come in handy, particularly for heat treating. I made this crude-looking but effective model many years ago, and it works great for me. You can move the burners around and turn burners off and on depending on how much heat you need and where you need it. The second main use of forges is for heat treating. Again, for heat treating, a very high temperature is not needed, but a larger volume works better, so bigger forges work great for heat treating because you can heat the entire knife to a consistent temperature all at one throw. The third main purpose of forges is for forge welding. Making Damascus or pattern welded steel requires very high temperatures, in excess of about 2400 degrees. So a forge that's going to be used for forge welding needs to have a smaller volume that can be heated to a very high temperature. The main restriction on size for a forge that's going to be used for forge welding is that it must be able to contain the entire billet and bring it all up to the full temperature all at one time. Building your own forge can be a fun project. Just be aware there's lots of explosive power in a tank of propane, so be cautious. Commercial forges are available from several companies such as NC Tool, which makes the popular Whisper series, and can be purchased from blacksmith supply houses like Centaur Forge, Kane and Son, Blacksmith Supply, and others for prices starting at under $500. If you make or buy a forced air type, I strongly recommend that you buy a safety cutoff that will shut off your gas automatically in the event of a power failure. If you buy a commercial forge, make sure you buy one with ports on the front and the back so you can run longer blades all the way through. Stay away from farrier type forges that are open all the way around or that only have very wide front doors. They're made for heating horseshoes and are not suited for knife making purposes. If you want to build your own, I'd recommend checking out Ellis Custom Knife Works, which sells a wide range of the refractory materials needed for building a forge. Forge plans can be found in a variety of places online. Forges are not that hard to make and can be a fun project. 
One thing to be aware of about forges is that they require maintenance, especially if you do a lot of forge welding. Forges are definitely not fire and forget missiles. The fluxes used for forge welding eat refractory materials alive, so you end up replacing the floors on a regular basis.